Okay. Offer is one is the framework, the one is the debate should the needs to deconstruct its own white privilege. The A is debate and white privilege are both systems involved in the distribution of life chances. Many debaters often use scholarships, and scholarship becomes a difference between graduating and not. And since debate can truly affect the ER outcomes of our lives, we have an ethical obligation to make sure it doesn't have whole lightness. The second argument is that we should we must prioritize proximal impacts because other impact framing would inevitably exclude an examination of whiteness in debate. The A is that prioritizing of the proximal impacts allows us to interrogate our own privilege and how it functions within debate. The, 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 um, we no longer have to surrender our own agency and imagination to state actors, but instead create space to to interrogate how to create change in, in our lives and our communities. The B is that proximal impacts are also best because structural change is unreliable and easily manipulated. The example is Brown versus Board of Education says that we are not desegregated, but there are literally parts of the Southwest that are more segregated now than they were in the days of Jim Crow. So now showing structural change doesn't, doesn't necessarily always work. The third argument is that other impact framing would, uh, other impact framing makes our experiences with oppression and capital and irrelevant. We as debaters become pops mobilized by outside interests, often in ways to make us argue against our own experiences. Uh, and the A argument is that this trains people within the debate to, uh, to normalize privilege because it is, it is allowed in all of our theoretical actions. This is how whiteness functions invisibly within our debate community. The fourth argument is our framing makes uh, procedural secondary question. The eight-point procedurals exclude common viewpoints and interpretations and are highly dependent on language thing, standards that are set by the privilege and, or uh, higher elite uh, institutions. So if you're a person like me who came from Lennox, Lennox Unified School District, you're probably fucked on most questions of T. But the fifth argument is that the ballot, the ballot matters. The eighth, the ballot is, uh, uh, not only is, is not only used to reward arguments, but also uh, identifies which of these uh, uh, also rewards how people perform and engage within debate. It, it identifies which arguments are seen as legitimate and successful and should be paid attention to. But the B is that the ballot should also function to break down complicitness. Our argument is that there is a current culture of silence on whiteness that happens within our activity. The ballot should be used to address these issues and break them down. Background. The one is a debate is an institution of whiteness. The A is that whiteness is, is a system of social ordering and a setting that privileges certain performances and bodies. The, the, the point under this is that whiteness is not merely in presence of people who identified as white, but also a system that also rewards certain performances and behaviors of race and organizes access to power. The two is that white privileges are held by current administrative structures within the debate community. The A is that all the NPDA rules and regulations regarding racial inequity fall under the other category after a discussion of gender inequity, ultimately, never even once mentioning systematic racism, this means that all rules are only used in, in, to intervene in instances of explicit verbal prejudice. This allows our system to appear colorblind and impartial, but produces the conditions for racial exclusion. The third argument is that debate whiteness has its own unique landscape and aesthetic. The A is that debate has its own ge geography that helps make the physical and tangible, the history of patriarchy and whiteness within our community. Lack of people of color created a geography that makes it clear that debate is not a safe space for people of color, but can't be re and end is self reinforcing. You look at statistics from this year. People of color make up less than 10 percent, less than 10 percent of the top 100, and women make up less than 20 percent of the top 100. All those women, less than less than four of them being women of color, which means there is an extreme exclusion in our community. This has been stagnant over the last half decade, and not nearly changed enough. The fourth argument is that we have that obligation to interrogate whiteness in debate. A is that we use, we as a community have created a training capacity to acknowledge racial inequity. This becomes the job of people of color. Our project debaters are both not of normative traditional debate, which makes this race seem abstract and separate instead of a system that would necessarily order the world. The B is that silence about whiteness is not neutral but reinforces whiteness in its entirety. You can see how there's a 2008 study done at the University of New Mexico where Chicano and Chicano students literally said they thought it was equally racist when the teacher didn't respond to a racial comment as the comment itself, meaning that silence in the activity is racist. What's up? Uh, why is saying the debate is colorblind politically productive? Uh, because we have an issue of colorblindness, one that is implicit. We never call what, what's people. What's wrong with blindness? Huh? What's wrong with being blind? blind? Oh, then we don't acknowledge that race exists. Okay. Race doesn't exist. No, no, no. Exist. There's nothing wrong with the idea of blindness. Wait, I'm sorry, which one is it? We're talking about the theory of colorblindness. It's called yeah, yeah, advanced by Michelle Alexander. We're simply okay. using a recognizable language so people can engage. Okay. You good? MC. Well, NAURS to endorse our performative interrogation of white privilege within debate. And support a vision of debate that encourages the deconstruction of community inequity. Vote NAURS to endorse our performative interrogation of white privilege within debate and support a vision of debate that encourages deconstruction of community inequity. The salt team. The one is white is not just about race, it is also about the performance of certain characteristics.
characteristics and identities implicitly attached to our cultural ideas of race. Performances of whiteness have occurred over the last past decades. You can see uh, in Natchez, Mississippi, you can literally go on plantation tours that make $1.5 million in three weeks, which shows the how uh, important and powerful the performance of race is to gaining actual political power. But the second is that by making explicit the effect of whiteness that has on our bodies, we can denutralize white privilege. What if whiteness functions most effectively when it is allowed to exist without awareness or comment because it can function invisibly and determines which bodies are and are not valuable. The third is that because we have different relationships to privilege, we are performing differently. Obviously, I'm a brown man, and so I have deconstructed my body wearing a people power t-shirt a deconstruction of whiteness, whereas Alyssa's white has wrote her white privilege on her body. This is a way to deconstruct whiteness within the debate community. The fourth is that performing racial identities in this way changes the ideas of static racial categories, but showing how whiteness is an aesthetic that in a way of ordering the world that can be disrupted and changed. This is key to effective community change and recenters the discussion about our presence of people of color away from the tokenizing attempts to merely have more people of color, but rather the structures that exclude them. The fifth argument is the support of a vision of debate that encourages competitive equity it means that A, we create a regular space for community discussions about inequity. B, we shift away from the colorblind practices that don't address structural inequity. But the C argument is that we also shift away from race being a peripheral, like on the periphery. Our argument is that not everybody needs to be project debaters, merely that debate inequity is a prior question because it makes our community unsustainable. Impact. Look, our impact is more racialized microaggressions. Our argument is racialized microaggressions are derogatory mechanisms that perpetuate control uh, uh, the control of bodies and white dominance. The A is that implicit rules of silence uh, add to the construction of whiteness. You can see how the construction of the aesthetic, or the control of the aesthetic ultimately controls what people can and cannot talk about. Ultimately, debaters subvert themselves to the state, their agency, the state, which eliminates their ability to think and function outside of the state, which is most likely a necessary prerequisite for people of color. You can look at the example of Sister to Sister in New York, where women literally have to deal with police brutality outside of the state because their bodies have been deemed disposable and the violence on their bodies have become invisible. But the second argument is that debate constructs disposable bodies. Look, our argument is simple. In a world where you tell debaters or that they shouldn't talk about the racial issues, they're seen as other, cast aside for the greater good, which is the order of our society. Society also does the same things with people, which is why you can see how black people constitute 16% of the population, 36% of the prison population. This is all because we let them disposable. page, um, but if not, I'll start on the solvency of the app. This is what I have right up here in text. Uh, so one off case position, and then the solvency. So the arguments I have been reading right after their advocacy. Okay. And then their framework. Just an FYI, I'm not a computer, so I'm just going to flow arguments on the page or make them. Okay. I will all come to when these are the Absolutely. Absolutely. Debate criticism first of the framework. Our interpretation is the role of the ballot is about the individual relationship with the very institution of debate. Again, the role of the ballot is about the individual relationship with the very institution of debate. Additionally, this means we should have a fundamental question about whether or not debate is good or bad. We should know. We should, should be able to answer those fundamental yes no questions to understand the way that the BMC is rooted with understanding the way the hierarchies already exist within the debate community means independently. If their argument is true that the debate exists in a space of violence against the body of color, then independently you have already proven the argument that debate should fundamentally collapse. However, you are calling for a stabilization of it within your alternative text. Additionally, the third argument is that the the very conclusion of the affirmative is that the, the debate increased the use of the hierarchies and flaws, specifically through the positions and the positionality that we have been in trained within, within the debate community as right now. I new types of whiteness continue to function invisibly within debate, which means any arguments about why debate would be good coming in and BMG are only manifestations about the way the whiteness thinks that we can continue to recreate and stabilize the system. The fourth argument is attempts at reconciliation of debate only serve a scaffold to plantation house. This is the guise of equality that continues to be used in areas of UDLs. Understanding the way that UDLs continue to promulgate new types of other bodies or bodies of color within their programs only allows the guys 
drives the stabilization bed to be, and the prior question was a progressive activity. This is what allows a very function of stabilization about those hierarchies and microaggressions to continue, which means that our criticism is a prior question to any of their arguments. Links. The first argument is their very accuracy leads to the promulgation of debate hierarchy, specifically because their alternative text indicates that they would support a vision of debate, specifically in a world in which we continue the promulgation of the system. This only means that new type of hierarchies you created. If your argument is true that whiteness operates on an invisible scale, then you only prop up the invisibility and uh, ability of vestige of whiteness to continue. A critical and introspection will not last forever, which means independently, even if the ballot is a material affirmation, it does not change our relationship indefinitely. Arguments is independently. This means that new types of creations only come back in a world in which we think that we are pacified toward the advent of racism and debate. The second argument the idea that we can create change within the system means independently we shy away from the idea that the fundamental system needs to be changed. This is the very logic of the Americans with Disability Act, i.e. we understand that we should build houses to then retrofit them with new types of disability requirements rather than engineer a society that fully accommodates bodies with disabilities in the first place, which means that the very idea of retrogression already occurs within the debate community is only calls for its fundamental stabilization. The third argument is the very notion of competition. Masculine is a, uh, a notion about masculine discourse. Understanding the way that new types of vestiges have to compete in the first place means that their vestiges of whiteness inherent to the type of discourse and promulgations that have to happen as the notion of competition means inherently the way that you've chosen to engage within the debate is a call for stabilization, a call for ethos and pathos against the judges to be able to indicate that your credibility is better than any of the other arguments. Means independently you are a widespread dismissal of other arguments that would be able to spotlight the way that debate hides new types of privilege. The fourth argument is the UDL co-option argument. Arguments that the very notion of inclusiveness is able to use to meet quotas to be able to stabilize the overall industry and continue the promulgation of indiv individuals disconnected from their societies, i.e. this is why debaters continue to cheer on the way that uniqueness frames the entirety of the universe, i.e. a genocide being inevitable is used as an argument to debate rather than recollecting our, our individual ethics with how that genocide is continuing. The fifth argument is about interest convergence. This is the idea that you only recognize the individual's interest within debate, specifically bodies of color within debate, to continue the grand narrative about debate. This is what the United States did during the Civil Rights Era to grant board ground for sport of education only to win the Cold War against Russia because they were using proper against our slaving and lynching techniques, which means that you are only a grand civilization of the system that says that hierarchy is inevitable and indifferent and uh, additionally have the impacts. The first argument is we must understand voice and space. Every second that is used continuing the promulgation of debate is a second that is not used to be able to understand the way that we relate to our individual and ethical communities, which means that independently, if there is only a limited time frame for this debate to occur, but also a world in which we would not speak over each other, then there is a question that the judge has to answer at the end of the debate about which space is more politically productive, specifically for the way we relate to the activity. The second argument is this type of insulated debate environment actually increases microaggressions comparatively better. In fact, this is witnessed by the round understanding your very advocacy text that says a vision is fetishized, which means that understanding the way the debate continues to promulgate and using arguments as efficiently as possible understands that we have an incentive to be able to use terminology that is based within the disabledist rhetoric. We'll get to this more on case, but our argument says that the very nature of debate increases our microaggressions tenfold in the way that we would not have to speak at this rapid pace in other areas. The third argument is MPJ and strikes actually hides our privileges behind our institutions rather than our individuality, specifically at MPJ tournaments. Women are ranked one spot lower than men means that there's a systemic impact of understanding the debate community as a promulgation of our needs of the hierarchies, but additionally, the debate community still ramifies those hierarchies, understanding that we have to be the number one team in the nation means that other, day, other individuals have to fundamentally change their relationship to us and not be able to foster the communities that we had at Nationals last year where me and Josh sat in a forum to be able to criticize the way that good, uh, good debater syndrome was able to continue our patriarchy within the debate forum. Additionally, a fourth argument is these hierarchies only increase new types of sex shaming. This is one of the fundamental community advocacy to say that Simone Walters advocacy specifically on the internet about my body are legitimate, which means that the community of brutality, i.e. the memes and the trolling that goes on continually are a justification of the way the microaggressions will always occur. The fifth argument is extend their violence arguments. If, they're, if their fundamental argument is true, the debate would not be able to check back any reasons why microaggressions are occurring and we could not stabilize the system and thus our individual advocacy. Vote SIURS to imagine the collapse of debate due to debaters inherent ties to violent antagonism. Vote SIURS to imagine the class of debate due to debaters' inherent ties to violent antagonism. Questions about that? Uh, not yet. Okay, solve team.
The first argument is that our advocacies have never come to fruition before, specifically the micro-political solutions like the Sisters Allies Against Discrimination in debate and the forum that we had at Nationals last year, understanding patriarchy and the way race continues to function because we always think that debate, debate will continue to exist, i.e. we never have to question our individual ethics toward the activity because we understand that it will continue to grow. Additionally, any of your disaster to collapse the debate are already taken out by your affirmative understanding the hierarchies exist, which means any new argument about why debate is essentially a good forum is an argument about why whiteness and the invincibility of whiteness have been condoned and should be recreated. Additionally, the next argument is that the permutation would still link to our argument. The idea that we can so stabilize debate so much has never been an argument about why we would have to be reflexive about the community, which means that if it is true that we always think we can stabilize the activity, we never have an incentive to be reflexive about the ways that hierarchies continue, specifically at the invisible level, which means that imagining an understanding which we would not get to participate with the activity is the only way to foster the very way of microaggressions that or foster the antithesis of microaggressions that they talk about. Additionally, our arguments is independently we would have this hurts our position because the forum of harm is occurring us right now, which means independently there is an indoctrination debate that is advocating and seeding our time, specifically our literacy, to be able to achieve new types of social programs to solve back for the institutions of violence that they're talking about, i.e. the way that we continue to rate, you know, relate to other areas, like me uh, me and Lauren Schaefer being able to create an anti-bullying campaign, how we're not being able to do that because round constraints and the ability uh, the ability of it to have to fulfill our speaking time, which means it dissuades from other social movements about debate sovereignty. The first argument is turn. You actually increase the ethic of disabledism. Your fetishization of vision within the plan text independently creates an environment in which individuals who do not have a vision are disturbed from the entirety of your plan text. Our argument says that the very efficiency standards that are created by the notion of colorblindness being bad and vision being good are the very notions that allow the continuing disqualification and hierarchies within debate. Additionally, the second argument is disabilities are actually used to frame racism, i.e., there was a biological determinist standpoint within the United States to say that persons of color were inadequate, were inadequate and inferior to white bodies because they are inherently more aggressive and actually had a smaller brain capacity, which means uh, understanding the trope of disability and the way that you condone a vision as being preferable is a link to actually increasing racism. The third argument is you have already linked to your position because you have fundamentally increased microaggressions, understanding the way that we relate to the debate community, i.e. from a one that would like to decrease ableism or understand a dis disabled community is a way to stop these microaggressions, facilitate new understandings of the community, and your alternative can never overcome that position. Alright, I'm going to go, the alt on top, their alternative. Uh, their framework arguments, their links, their impacts, and then our advocacy, um, our framework, and then the rest of the case in order should I have time. Y'all need me to repeat? I yeah, please. No, no, no. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> alternative, y'all's alternative. Your uh, framework arguments, your links, your impacts, our advocacy, our framework arguments, and the rest of the round. That's why I feel it's like that's what their speech is. Straight down. Yeah, the whole thing is just one column, so I'm just going to throw everything on their sheet, on oh. their sheet, and everything. In a world where they have not in the, they have not interrogated the way that racism and debate can be deconstructed. Debate is not inherently problematic. We see the problem but debate has been used in a problematic way, but that doesn't mean it can't be saved in this instance. The world where they are saying we should immediately give up on it, that is means that we are going to be the disads to the permutation or disads to the alternative in this debate. Well, I don't have access to education because debate has been deconstructed. That is going to be the problem in this debate on the uh, on the alternative. My first argument here is gonna be a permutation. Vote NIURS to endorse our performative interrogation of white privilege within debate and support uh, and support debate that encourages the deconstruction of community inequity. Vote and also vote to imagine the collapse of debate due to debate's inherent ties to violent antagonism. This is what we saw for a couple of reasons. First, we should we say that before we entirely deconstruct debate, we should always attempt to uh, make it a place of liberation, especially when they can see it on the frame of record number one point that debate is something that distributes life chances, which means the more we collapse it, you are, are literally eliminating all individuals or a mechanism for the better life chances for individuals, the reason that you would perpetuate all the inequity you talk about, and particularly all of the racial inequities uh, and social inequity within the community. Additionally, we say that individuals would, uh, in a world where you simply say we collapse debate uh, inevitably or imagine collapse, you can always kick out of the actual implications of collapse and debate. Simply imagining collapse debate doesn't actually get rid of the activity, which means you probably don't have access to solving for your impacts. But, uh, 
Uh, additionally, we say the affirmative would always have as propensity to solving back for the imaginative collapse of debate. We say that we solve back for the collapse of white normative debate, which is always to be a reason we get access to creating a new uh, new way of engaging with debate, which is always to be new, uniquely good in this instance, the reason we would have propensity to solve back for all of your impacts. So I'll see. Question? Not yet. They say that individual, uh, this never comes to it to division, uh, fruition because the individuals say the debate should always exist, or it's not the debate should always exist, or has, is always going to have to exist, but simply that so because it's something that affects us intimately and is a, literally a place where individuals can come and create discussions like this, that it has potential value, not that it exists in a valueless place that, are valu that is valuable in the status quo, but that we should attempt to try and create that value or see if it's possible before we give up on the entire activity. But additionally, they say that we can create uh, good forums. Uh, uh, what is the second argument? Yeah, they could create forums, which would solve back for the. Uh, <coughs> Additionally, we say that creating forums, uh, they don't, like, they don't provide a bright line to this or what this even means. We so, or what a good forum would be. Our argument would be that debate is a forum. Debate ha forums have happen outside of debate, but everything that you do can be uh, can be allowed access to creating new forums or interrogations, which is always a reason that we would have a propensity to solve back for any of this position. They also say the permutation would always blink because we're uh, an act of microaggression. First, I will say that we are skinning rid of the, uh, like, we are not endorsing the vision aspect of the plan text, we are not attempting to be ableist, like, which I will get to on the affirmative, which is going to answer the permutation links. They say this is going to be a normal social indoctr indoctrination argument, it's going to be that we can, indo like, we can choose this into, like, a tool to actually to engage with ourselves and our communities. Look, we use the things we do in round and take those outside of round. I now understand considerably more about activism because of last year than I ever would have. That is something valuable that happened from debate. Collapsing that destroys the access to that impact. Probably a turn to your argument. Question? Yeah. Um, so, like, if it already happened and we have definitely learned a lot about activism, what now helps us? So, like, Continuing what, what the process. Now? There's no end point. Until equity is reached, it's not like you get to a certain point and you're like, I guess we have enough equity. So like future debaters? Okay. Uh, roll of the ballot. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. They say that we have to, uh, like we always look at, yeah, hierarchies and debate are always inevitably going to exist and we actually stabilize these hierarchies are going to be, that hierarchies exist in the status quo, that's not a reason they are going to be inevitable, which means that stabilization is in the insight. Additionally, we are not stabilizing the institution of debate, we are destabilizing the institution of debate, and we are almost appealed for writing this fucking argument two rounds ago because it's against the rules. It's probably a reason we are not normally a stabilization of debate. You don't get access to this argument. Additionally, they say that we increase hierarchies of whiteness and stabilize, which is going to be that argument. It's going to be the you don't specifically interrogate whiteness. You at least went to this position as much. But additionally, we stabilize those hierarchies. We're talking about performance of whiteness, not simply the idea of white people in debate, which is always a reason we check back against this. They say we're UDLs. We used to be bodies of color. But it's going to be the UDLs are also the reason many individuals have access to college. So even if they are problematic in the status quo, they are a start in the correct direction. And there's simply one question in this debate, and that is whether or not debate is something that can be saved. We say that it can, but we have to make act like actual change and try to do that instead of just giving up and doing nothing like the alternative. Links. They say that we prop up hierarchy, which means that whiteness becomes invisible. Are you going, what do you want here? Uh, they, they don't. That white is already invisible. Yeah, white is already in invisible, which means there's no uniqueness for your link. But additionally, we say that we check back for this in a world where we are not saying we are definitely pacified. Look, we talked about sexism last year, and that doesn't mean we've stopped talking about sexism. There is no pacification, which means you're probably not getting into your link. But the second thing, they say that create, should we create change in the fundamental logic, uh, which means we can serve a grand narrative instead of actually changing things. Or things we be, we are attempting to structurally change things. But there has to be a starting point. We are not the same logic as the ADA, but we are simply trying to create a place space for radical change within the community, which the individuals can choose to engage in. They simply say that competition is inherently masculine. That is true. That is not inherently, like, I don't think that competition has to be inherently masculine. I think it kind of takes a masculine form in debate, which is probably the reason that we need things like changing the way we uh, think about debate or the way we engage debate, which is that happens as per the affirmative advocacy, which is the reason we would sell back for a lot of the masculine discourse you're talking about here, which one is a late turn to this. All the UDL arguments, they say, oh, you can cross by the arguments we've already about like why UDLs being used for quotas is problematic. That is not what we are endorsing. We you can look at the very specific point that they concede on solvency point number five, where we tell you exactly what community space looks like for individuals, or individuals are moved away from the periphery and have stable access to talking about their experiences. Um, yeah, which means that we are not endorsement of like, these things. They say that. Interest convergence means we only have to recognize the uh, uh, only recognize the bonds of color to proper grand narratives. So an example, an example of these that they use is 
Brown v. Board be little examples of how we indict those grand narratives as well as the decision of Brown v. Board as per our framework and over that was conceded. That means that we are not engaging or supporting those structures, but additionally, well, well me, but merely actually trying to recognize bodies of color because in a world they are <coughs> invisible in the status quo. But additionally, they're talking in verbal language as well, which is probably a real link when they talk about recognition that is often a visual language, which means that if we are linking to this position, they are at least linking to some degree. Uh, on the impact. Yeah. Um, they say that uh, on the impact of it, our arguments wouldn't be that we would solve back to this in a world where we create actual space for interrogation. They simply say we match normal without debate. But that doesn't mean there is a way to interrogate space or problems within communities that replicate themselves. We say the debate is a microcosm of a larger political sphere. You can get rid of debate, but that's not going to stop the aggression that you're talking about here, which means that your impacts are inevitable in a world without being affirmative. Anything else you need? Yeah, advocacy. They say, turn, that we are an ethic of disabledism. But guys, simply talking about vision and colorblindness, my first argument here is going to be that colorblindness has nothing to do with vision. It's about the idea of not engaging with the understanding of race, which is the reason that we do not link to this. But additionally, we say that we, uh, like, what do you want here? Uh, additionally, we say that in a world where you can see the entire consultancy, even if we did engage in ableism in language, and I apologize if we did, that was not our intention. We say that any way that we can address community inequity and create these discussions is probably the best way to solve. Your alternative doesn't solve for this impact. We at least have a risk of solving back for this impact of ableism by creating a space to interrogate that within Brown and create community accountability about those arguments through the ballot, which you can see as part of the framework. When Frank Wilderson was fighting for the ANC in South Africa, the university was a battleground, and the way in which diversity forums were used was so that Nelson Mandela could co opt it, saying, We'll use the socialists, we'll talk with the capitalists, we'll talk with the racists, we'll talk with the sexists. The diversity forum ultimately led to the assimilation by which now South Africa's policy is another step in neoliberalism. The debate space and education itself is structured ideology to maintain the same notions of competition and aggression that is maintained, proven by the way in which you just toss off color and say we didn't mean to be offensive. That is the things that white people say when they said we didn't mean to be offensive when we used the N-word. Our argument is that those microaggressions curve out, occur as a result of the way we choose to frame the way in which our language operates in debate, which is the reason the ethical question is this. Debate is not the only racist thing that exists. So, is it better to say that we can reform it, much like the United States tries to say they can reform themselves, or do we call for the entire thing to burn down? Don't let them rebuild the, the, the plantation. Our argument is that that should be rejected. They say we don't interrogate racism in the bay. I'm calling baloney. Mike has a couple arguments why only in a one of a form do we become depolitalized, de de depoliticized, or over. He makes a damning solvency argument. This is only when we actually think that the bay is going to collapse. Will we actually do anything to save it? Our argument is that the notion of forms provide a passivity where people still feel like the community exists. So what matters if you actually go drinking instead of talking about diversity? Our argument is that the maintenance of stabilization is the same kind of pa uh, passivity. Just because you talk about these issues does not mean these things actually lead to some 
somewhere else. And if this is the trade off to said, which is damage to the permutation, which is in a world where we do both, we actually remove our ability to intellectually affirm the way in which we can create material conditions to instead regurgitate the same kind of arguments and debate. Our link is predicated off the fact that debate is fundamentally an echo chamber to ideas that we posit in here do not actually go outside, but rather we really confirm our own biases. This process is a maintenance of the ideology, which is the reason why the permutation can not be gone for. You say you decrease our life chances. This is the same kind of tokenization process where debate is constantly formed as instead of being the school and prison pipeline, you're now the school to justify our work job pipeline. Our argument is that this is what's happening in the UDL by which law firms are actually using UDLs to fulfill their diversity requirement, which was something that almost made me quit debate in my senior year. This is the argument for why the collapse of it would actually be more revolutionary because I wish I would have gone back and said, F you, I will not choose to engage in this discourse. So are they saying that we don't actually collapse debate? We give arguments to why that imagination is key and indicates that only the imagination creates that structural rupture within ourselves that says we actually have to change society and not just debate. These say we collapse white normative debate. Our argument is that we have several links to why only collapsing white normative debate is actually not something that will solve and why you will only stabilize the system. They say debate is key because it causes value. This is our argument about interest convergence and it gives that the idea of reformism only maintains a dominant ideology. You do not change the society when you really choose to run the criticism. They say all things are forums, not a defense of what you chose to do in this debate. They say we understand more. This is our this is the strategy of white acquiescence, which academics are able to say, look, I know what you're talking about, thus so don't actually have to have a material change in what they do. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. So are you saying that we're advocating for a forum or where's all these forum ideas coming from? It's like your argument about advocacy text. Yeah, you have called like, for the stabilization of debate by getting rid of the bad that's right. Not a forum, excuse my use of a synonym. Okay, but it's just like the okay. other All right. I was <laughs> like, okay, well. Yeah, I'm gonna go. All right. Links. Oh, this is really going on the question of the link page. However, there's a couple misunderstandings that I think are going to make it devastating for us at you. The second uh, our argument, our argument I want you to cross that across is the number four. She says that we uh, that some forms of competition are based in masculine discourse. Our argument is a uh, indict to the actual way in which argument plays out in and of itself. Think about this in the context of the Socratic method by which males usually have engaged with themselves in the notion of competition in order for one to dominate the other. It's the reason why the structure of debate means that you inherently have to see the other as someone that you overcame and a violence in which you use that to silence the other team, which is a reason that forms should be abandoned, that's the that structure should be abandoned. Moreover, the, the starting point that you've chosen is bad. Our argument is that that starting point is precisely what corporations have used to be able to maintain UDLs as a process of maintaining their diversity quotas. Moreover, our entrance convergence arguments are have uniqueness on this question because if our arguments about UDL, your UDLs are true, then your forum would only be perceived as an attempt to stabilize the system. It would not be revolutionary. You said we need a stable access to talk about experience. Our argument was the trade-off they said, which indicates that you can talk about your experience in a way in which it can actually at least revolutionary change to me means that when you talk about your experience, it produces the echo chamber, right? MSNBC says something, Democrats say something, they exist within an echo chamber in which they all confirm their ideologies. Debate confirms these ideologies as well, i.e. we have to continually maintain this notion of competition. We are able to call things colorblind, which means it doesn't lead to revolutionary potential. Only the imagination that we burn this down can actually push us to that point where we realize, holy crap, little tanks are going to destroy stuff. We're over. They say we indict the notion of brown versus board of education, but you forget in the way in which Mike actually historically extrapolates this argument further, not just found that board of education failed, but that it was a piecemeal reform piece in which we gave you brown versus board of education, and thus we got to win the Cold War. This denied the ability for there to be revolutionary potential in the context of communism, which is an argument why you link to this ad. You say that we link to our ableism position because of recognition. This is an able link. Our argument is that saying that for some reason, persons with disabilities do not have the capacity for recognition is something that implies that the body must have a certain way of recognizing the other. Our link differential is much more damning on this question. It indicates that colorblind inherently posits the abnormality to be evil. I, if someone's colorblind, they have a characteristic which makes them undesirable. That argument means you tie the way in which the body becomes implicated within your racial politics. Also, the idea that disabled bodies can't speak like us links. Also, the idea of the deep state bodies cannot speak like us is a link to the criticism. Now, the framework bit. <laughs> Or will the ballot is that you should question your individual relations to the debate. I think our arguments about the alternative page about why only the imagination and the collapse of it is actually the only conducive form for revolutionary politics. They say hierarchies are inevitable. This is probably another link to your criticism. The logic repetition means we maintain the structure. This is also a pretty damning link because in what we say hierarchies are able to maintain themselves is a reason why we're able to not challenge fundamental society of things. They say that you're appealed for running this. Obviously, you run the appeal. It proves that the debate communities are already written to assimilate you, which is our argument about how whiteness can then become indivisible because it becomes decentered. Our 
goes to see UDLs or Kenya College, I've had that argument. UDLs are now or don't, they don't matter if they're Kenya College. If when you go to college, that form in and of itself is a fundamental destabilizing effect, which is why you are more or less likely to even go to those places as a result of your brown skin to have violence upon you. Moreover, they say we don't lead to pacification. Our argument about the echo chamber means even if you don't think you are pacified, the, I, the people who you engage in this discourse with do not actually have any fundamental change to them because you do not create any uncomfortability. Only we actually push people to that point where they suddenly become uncomfortable. That allows for them to then recognize the things that are wrong. That's their advocacy. This is where the politics of apology plays itself more damningly. Our argument is that merely saying that, look, we understood the implications of this and doesn't mean to say it is precisely the argument about why people who are able to decenter their discourse, that is not true for people of color, who are also always tied to the way in which they talk to other people. Our argument is that this type of deferral precisely is the politics that allows for those hierarchies to continue. It's also a microaggression impact, which is pretty devastating because the logic of microaggression is not that you know when you say it, but that it occurs. Our argument is that this is precisely the reason why you would reject them a priori because Mike gives us a reason why that place the back to position, the alternative will resolve this issue because we would call for the collapse of the main, which means we would collapse the entirety of those microaggressions being able to play themselves out. Goes to the impact. They say getting, ready, getting, getting, able, getting rid of this able soft. They don't, oh, they don't answer our actually specific arguments for why the vision fetish and the use of MPJs and strikes that are inherent to be in of itself or mean that you're not able to solve our argument. The fact that any defense of the debate in the PMR means they would have to lace our arguments about how sexism is not just what you say in debate, but connected to the actual way in which we do everything here, which is the reason why I burn it down. It's an overview. And then our alternative are links, <coughs> the case, and the impacts. By case, you mean the advocacy? Yeah. So, just to make sure I got this right, it's the your advocacy, the links, our advocacy, the impacts, your impacts? Yes, that's right. <coughs> As I will witness to me, the bell will read that the alternative solves the entire affirmative advocacy alone. There is no reason to risk the permutation. The permutation has no net benefits, and their calls for the fundamental stabilization of debate have overridden the fundamental yes-no question about whether or not hierarchies are good. Their arguments about knowledge being produced from debate are knowledges that have been informed by the byproduct and the paradigm of whiteness. Your knowledges that have been produced by the byproduct of debate are knowledges that are informed by hierarchy. The knowledges that they talk about that we would be able to use in the debate community are the knowledges that are running counter, uh, counter uh, obligatory to the very types of social programs and social protests that are existed in the status quo, which means that the very training in debate is the training and not having to take an ethical stance toward microaggression. The alternative would immediately rectify those problems and avoid the use of disabledist rhetoric, which we independently indict. Alternative down. The permutation is not a winning strategy for them. Our argument says independently that this means that they would literally say that the ideas can stay confirmed, but we would only have our, star, our own biases with them in the first place. This means we're fundamentally trading chess pieces back and forth and never having a new fundamental interaction within the community. The permutation only means that we should stabilize the community in and of itself and that we should continue this type of hierarchical knowledge. Our argument independently would say that we should get out into the community and understand that debate should not always be the forum for airing our grievances. Rather, a new type of bias Product, but we just vote for a project is actually stopping the project's rejuvenation and mollifies it before it has become something tangible in the real world, which means our alternative is a prior question to be able to solve that for all of their arguments. Additionally, if we win a link argument, we have won a disad to the permutation. We have one argument as to why understanding the collapse of debate is why we actually engage in the social protests of debate. Never before have we actually believed that we would have to reconcile the collapse of debate. We continue to see it collapse, but think that it'll be there tomorrow which justifies our hierarchies, it justifies MPJ, it justifies the way that we would not have to connect with the other. Only in a world in which we just emphatically embrace the alternative can we change our fundamental relationships, and that's the framing question. They have conceded the framework is the role of the ballot, is the best way to change our relationship with debate. The only relationship the affirmative changes is to say that debate should continue, and thus hierarchy should continue, and thus disability and disabledism should continue. Links. 
I first want to extrapolate the seven link argument, which we have won cleanly, I believe. It is the idea that we can still create change within the system rather than change the fundamental system in and of itself. They say that this is not the same because we still have a space within it, but that is disregarding the way that Japan has manipulated bodies within that space. I hierarchies are continuing to discriminate against women in the MPJ paradigm. You have not won an argument why using the system is better to critique the system. There is not a coherent link turn or impact turn strategy. They have one argument that says they are is effectively solving back for the mask because we win with the mask a new form of debate, but they are continuing the voice of space argument. If we win, then every second we spend in a debate round dis makes disingenuous our social advocacy, we win the debate. Any new extrapolation of the PMR and a vote on that argument would be judge intervention. They have conceded this argument on the impact page. The framing is voice as space. The continual extrapolation of debate means we cannot connect with outside incongruities. Solvency. Our alternative can reconcile the disabledism links. Our argument says the very type of rhetoric that you use in this debate around is to say that vision is good and colorblindness is bad. Additionally, our argument says that the fundamental missteps, the way that we characterize that language is derivative of the debate program. It is derivative of the way that we understand competition. We should always say new types of efficiency standards and getting better. Our alternative calls for the reimagination, understanding the way that disability continues to operate within the system. Additionally, it doesn't have to just be unique to disability because we understand the whole system has to be changed rather than just change micro and reform policies in the interim. That is the logic of the ADA, and that is what allows the state to continue and reaffirm its discrimination. There is no hope for the affirmative to solve back those rhetoric links. <coughs> This argument that we link to disability, that we are essentialist, and we have foreclosed on individuals' opportunities within debate are brand new arguments that are not within that second alternative solvency argument. I have it. You imagine a collapse, which means you can kick out the implications, such as scholarships, that debate is a space that gives you life chances, and I'm only impacting out that conceded argument. All right, these are all interesting points, I'm sure. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even if they're not able, this is a reason as to why you cannot ensure the solvency of the counterplan, right? They just say that we have these new relationships in the world where we reimagine, but you can't literally reimagine that, so you don't even know what the relationship would look like. This is an ambiguous text. It is something we cannot physically think of because we don't know how and who is affected by this community. Probably the reason why we should start with reframing. Anything else? Links or is the solvency problem? 
I think there's a few reasons as to why we would ultimately, ultimately you wouldn't even solve it out by yourself. The one is that, the, 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 yeah, the, no, I need that links. Links. There's two links they go here for here really hard. The first is that the, that the structure debate is inherently competitive, right? And that this competition replicates through masculinity. I think Alyssa's is right. I think that the competition happens in the status quo and becomes masculine, but that does not mean that competition is inherently masculine. I think Alyssa does a damn good job of filling into these competitive shoes, but doesn't always fill into these masculine requirements, which means that we can literally have the opportunity to reframe what competition is, to make it more ethical, to allow these types of personalizations of these arguments and eliminate micro Regressions. In a world where we can do that, it doesn't necessarily mean that debate is a unique forum, right? And debate is a good forum, and it allows us to do this. You also conceded arguments that outside of debate doesn't work, right? You conceded arguments as to how the outside structures of debates are easily manipulated and how they can be changed. You've also conceded uh, they can be changed, which means that uh, ultimately the functioning within debate and using the space that we are given from the privileges of this campus and our coaching staffs and whoever pays for us to get here is the best way to do this thing. Like, look, I think. We don't link to this argument in a world where their entire premise is that competition is always masculine. I think we are winning reasons as to why we can reframe these things and we shouldn't just implicitly look at them as if they are stable in that manner. Additionally, they're going hard for this argument as to why we, we, we don't ever articulate why the use of the system is best. I think it's obvious. It's because we have access to it. It's because we are literally here. You also can see reasons as to why this debate, debating within the debate space is most important because MPDA regulations don't have a way of addressing race, right? That was our argument from the get-go that this is literally the only forum, which means it has to be a good forum. And even if it's not the best, it's literally the only one, which means it's not a question of whether it's good or bad. It's a question of whether it's accessible or not accessible. And we're telling you that that this space right now is the most accessible to deal with these arguments because if we take it outside, we are ignored more than we would be in round. Our advocacy problem. Look, on this aid list, Frederick, I apologize if I came off wrong. That is not our intention, right? When you ask a question of what do we mean by colorblind, when we say that you don't acknowledge race, I think that is our attempt to not function within this ableist or disabled rhetoric, right? And I think we should have the opportunity to clarify through a point of information, and I think that goes pretty clarified. I don't see independent reasons as to why this would necessarily be bad, and anything else? Um, I think you should go for the relink and make uh, extend the arguments about why we at least have a risk of solving. Like, ableism exists everywhere. They okay. can see the debate is a microcosm of a larger scale. Additionally, you consider that debate is ultimately a microcosm of a larger sphere, which means that even if you were to collapse a bit, you don't collapse the social problems, right? It's probably the reason that's why we should function within the system, because these problems continue with or without debate. We can at least try and reform the activity that we continually participate in in order to have this actual change. You're just eliminating or thinking about the eliminating the activity doesn't mean that you eliminate structural inequity, because debate is a microcosm of larger structures. That's why we should start with debate, reframing this, and work our way out. The reason as to why debate needs to be an independent and unique space. Look, at the end of the day, you cannot do the alternative because you do not know everybody's social position. You have to work within the activity and give people their opportunity.